Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Minneapolis Million Prototype 445 Tractor number X231 Restoration Series Installment 41. Um, I need to start making that replacement 2-3 shift fork for the transmission. I don't know if I'm going to get all the way through it in this installment, but uh, I have a feeling by the time I edit this I'll know so I'll title it accordingly. I have a lot of work uh, to do in order to get that thing shaped and welded and made and fitted and I don't know it's gonna be a big job so I'm gonna get started stay tuned all right first step is to examine the piece that we're trying to duplicate um, right now uh, I'm only going to worry about duplicating the flat steel section that makes up the main body I'm not worrying about the collar or the sleeve yet that engages the rail um, this is 5 16 thick okay we have two 45 degree bends and it gives us a three quarter of an inch offset so those bends are going to have to be pretty sharp and all in the right places to duplicate all of that um, it looks like they had it pretty well shaped before they formed it. Looks like they used either a press or a break. We have a pretty um, uh, noticeable, pretty sharp uh, pointed indent right here. So it means it was probably up against a stop there. And we have a lighter witness mark here and a lighter one there. So it looks like they kind of had it formed first. They put the first bend in it bend in it, sorry, and then they went and did the second one. The second one's kind of obliterated by all that weld that got laid on top of it. But So I'm just going to try and mimic what they did since they reasonably shaped it first. I took some gasket material and basically kind of cut a copy of what the rough form of that piece would have been when it was still flat. So we have that. And then chopped out a chunk of 5 16 steel which is reasonably formed along most of the fork body. I have surplus material at the base yet and a lot of extra at the top to use as needed. Um, plus having a longer chunk will make it easier for me to bend this. So now that we have this much of it figured out, the real work begins. I need to start making some sort of a um, press uh, adapter or forming um, setup to uh, start getting the bends uh, as tight and as uh, properly placed as I need them. So that's where this raw steel comes into play. A um, few pieces here, but I have a lot more where that came from, so I'm not too worried there. I kind of have a picture in my mind of what I want to build. I don't have any blueprints to show you, so really I kind of work best when I start cutting pieces and just kind of build it as I go, uh, make changes as needed, revamp as needed. I'll get a bunch of pieces cut out here. We'll get them kind of loosely placed together before we weld anything and reevaluate more at that time. got so far main base block made out of half inch uh, thick angle four inches wide we have quarter inch angle to go on top to provide a sharp uh, press point have side support pieces this will weld on here to provide a level surface to anchor the work to with a 45 degree transition we have these guides that go on each side and we have these smaller support features which will help to keep them in place and take care of any side to side thrust now for the upper part Another piece of heavy half inch angle, which will come down like that. And I've got a cut down piece of quarter inch for support on the inside. And we'll have 
two side pieces that will go on like that. You can see why the support is there. This will go right underneath the ram that's in my hydraulic press. Put that over. Now we have two guide plates for each side of this. So this is actually upside down. It will tip over and press down on this and these guide plates will go inside these side angles and hopefully keep everything square with itself. So I'm hoping all this stuff is going to work. Um, it works in my head, but on the bright side there's only two things that ever really uh, burn me and that is physics and reality. So what's the worst that can go wrong, right? Um, like I say, I want to, this is upside down, it's going to be flipped over and come down on there. Um, I want to only have about an inch and a half engagement from the point of this down the face in relation to the point of this and down that face. So these are going to be offset from one another somewhat because I'm going for a 45 degree bend and I can only do one bend at a time. I wanted to try and uh, make a fixture where I could just mash both bends at, at once in one stroke and uh, be done with it. But um, for the equipment I have and what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to use heat and I was afraid that trying to induce both bends at the same time would actually either stretch or maybe even compress that metal and give me some problems. So it looks like they bent this one angle at a time, so I'm going to try doing it one angle at a time. So this whole setup will only allow me to do 45s, but if you can envision, if I can attach the uh, new piece back here in this area that I'm going to cut away anyway to have it held uh, solidly here I should be able to pretty well control where that bend happens and I should be able to keep it tight with the kind of uh, pressure that's in the hydraulic press. Hopefully we will see what happens. I still got to drill some holes in these base plates so that I can bolt this attachment down to the uh, bed of my press and then like I said earlier I will take the uh, the top piece off that's underneath the uh, uh, hydraulic cylinder and this will replace it altogether. So with these two pieces pretty well tied in to one another with these guides plus the base being bolted down, I really can't see how I can have a whole lot of movement going on when I try to apply pressure. So the next step now is to try to weld all this together without warping things to the point that nothing fits. Okay, now we have a bottom half and we have a top half. Um, it took actually quite a while to weld these things up. Um, it was definitely an exercise in patience to say the least. I had to stop often and recheck all my angles, make sure everything was staying square. Plus, uh, especially with this uh, bottom half piece, I had to stitch weld a lot of this very strategically to keep these guides from warping, from moving out of position, uh, keep them all square, keep them all plumb. Um, a lot of starting and stopping, concentrating the heat in different areas to just try and keep the warpage down you know, to a minimum. And I must say, I am pretty happy with how it all came together. I have good fit, and when you go down and get seated all the way, pretty good lockup. It really doesn't even rattle or move. Um, everything is nice and square. Both of my um, 
press surfaces come together nicely. There is no uh, uh, pore overlap or crooked mesh, if you will. Pretty much all came together just the way I was hoping that it would. So took a while, but I think I'm kind of happy with it right now. And a couple of details I want to cover real quick. Um, I did take the flap wheel and take the mill scale off of these uh, pieces here. Where we're going to slide inside those guides to uh, try and reduce any chance of galling or uh, take any unnecessary friction out of the equation. I also beveled these leading edge corners to also reduce the risk of galling or snagging in here. Hopefully if we have any kind of uh, horrendous side thrust on those, which, you know, these press faces are at 45 degree angles. So the further down you go with this piece, it's going to want to go forward for the same amount of distance that it goes down. So it's going to be pushing pretty hard against the leading edge faces of those. So uh, we'll just see how that works. I'm going to have to apply some grease to those as well. And uh, I left this. A heavy four inch angle here on the upper portion rounded. I didn't want to have a square point um, because I kind of want to uh, have this piece curl the metal over instead of snag it and start to uh, push it. So pretty happy with how that factory edge was on that leading edge there on that front corner. Um, this piece here I've got, like I said before, I put this little piece of quarter angle on top of the heavy half because it has the sharper point. That's going to be my main bend point. Um, I just uh, kind of stitch welded this back feature on. That's going to kind of be like a table. Um, I didn't want to weld it completely solid all the way around because I wanted to be able to uh, cut these welds and take that off and uh, redo if I had to. But um, I'm actually running, instead of a straight 45 degree angle here, I'm actually running about a 47, 46, 47. And that was done on purpose because when you go and bend metal, you can apply all the tension you want. And even with heat, sometimes you let tension off and you might get a little bit of spring back. It might, it might not stay in the, you know, the, the position that it was when you had the pressure on it. So. Um, if I get a little bit of spring back here, hopefully it returns me to a 45. If it stays at that slightly sharper 46, 47 degree angle, that's all right too because I can always get by with sharper angled bends here, but I just do not want to have any uh, flatter angles on there because a sharper angled bend will just reduce the overall vertical real estate that it needs to uh, have in order to get the required offset. If I start straightening these out, that transition becomes longer and longer and I might not have the room for that. And finally, preliminary thoughts on how I'm going to anchor the work into the fixture. Um, at this point, I'm just thinking about drilling a few holes back here in the area that's going to have to be removed for the relief for the gear and just bolting this piece right down to this back table so I know it's not going to wander or pull or move at all uh, once I get it placed where I want that bend to happen. So now that we've been through all of that, I'll show you how I'm going to put this in my press. Okay, everybody, please don't laugh, but this is my cheap uh, Harbor Freight 20-ton shop press. But honestly, guys, snicker if you want. I've done a lot of stuff with this thing. I've actually been pretty impressed with it for what it is. So um, to get my fixture in here, the first thing I have to do is remove this piece. Next, I can throw the base piece on there. And I drill the holes in it so that I could pass these half inch bolts down through on the outsides of the rails and actually be able to attach this base solidly to the platform. And using the same suspension hardware as before, the upper portion will take its place beneath the hydraulic jack. And now to center the base, I'll just throw my piece of steel in there. Remember, I'm not anchored on the other side yet, so I'm not actually going to be bending anything. But what I want to do is run this top down until everything bottoms and it binds on this piece of steel that's in the middle. Like I say, remember, I'm not actually bending it because there's, there's nothing holding it. I'm just following the angle of it right now. Just trying to apply a little bit of pressure 
basically equalize the top half to the bottom half. Boom, there we go. Nice and solid in there. This is the point now where everything is going to want to be centered under pressure. So we just go and we would tighten these bolts down right now if we were ready to start uh, pressing. And that's how you do the whole setup. Now the final thing to do is check the return stroke. Nice. It'll probably be even smoother once I get some grease on there. All right, now that I've got the fixture made, I think I'm going to wrap this video right here. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good on length. I'll just call this like phase one of shift fork fabrication, something like that. I don't know. I'll find something. But um, next video, I'm going to try to uh, get that piece not only located in that base, but also uh, get it securely attached and see what it's going to take to heat it and then maybe try putting the first bend in it. Who knows? Um, I know there's a lot of question marks yet. Um, I toyed around with... Uh, possibly making some sort of an attachment to put that piece on that I want to bend so that I could heat it out of the base and then get it red, then put it in the base and then somehow find a way where all that stuff was solid enough that nothing was going to move and I was going to keep my bend point where I wanted it and then try to do the bend. It just turned into, it was going to be such a big job to try and do all that and try and make all those extra pieces and then how do you get something that's going to be secure enough without any movement at all to keep accuracy. I figure, you know, I'm just going to attach that piece right in the base. I'm going to try and heat it the best I can. I know that base is going to be a giant heat sink and it's going to be pulling all that out of the metal. I'll just, I'll, that's something I'm going to have to fight when I get there. So, um, you know, it doesn't take a lot of pressure to bend hot 5 16 steel. I can bend that stuff with a crescent wrench by hand if I get it warm. The uh, purpose of this fixture is to basically bend it tighter and bend it more accurately than what I could do by hand. So, We'll just see how it all works. We're going to keep plugging ahead. If this doesn't work out, I'll try something different. And I'll keep going until I find something that, uh, that gives me what I'm looking for, for results. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Tune in again.